All right, boom, Uncle Sam FM here. Welcome to episode five of my uh, American football series with Football Manager. Um, I thought we would start, the World Cup groups were drawn, and so I thought we would quickly go through one group at a time and look at the World Cup group. So we've got Iran, Ivory Coast, Russia, and Uruguay in group A. Of course, Russia the hosts, so they're group A. Uh, group B. Argentina, Croatia, Switzerland, and Tunisia. I would say that group, you got to think Argentina and Croatia are going to go through, but Switzerland, there's no pushovers. Um, group C, Belgium, Costa Rica, Germany, and South Africa. Hard to see either Costa Rica or South Africa getting advancing beyond Belgium and Germany, but um, that's why they play the games, right? Group D, Chile, Japan, Mexico, and Poland. That's a pretty balanced group without anybody really standing out. Um, I kind of think that'll be interesting um, if I'm just picking teams. Man, that's a tough one. I'd say maybe Chile and Poland. Um, but the reality is that's that's going to be a fun group. Could be could be everybody ends up with three points. Everybody, everybody draws everybody. So, um, But that'll be a fun group to watch. Then Group E. This is what I guess you would call the group of death. The United States did qualify, but they had to do it through a playoff. They finished fourth in CONCACAF, the final round of qualifying, which meant they had to go to a playoff with a team from Asia, which turned out to be Uzbekistan, and they beat Uzbekistan to qualify. And your reward for qualification, you get put in the toughest group in the World Cup, which is not uncommon for the United States, just because they're not a seed and they're not a European team so they usually get stuck with two European teams and then it's all a matter of kind of luck with who else they get drawn with and in this case it was kind of a worst case scenario for the United States as they get drawn with Brazil who won more World Cups than any other nation England who of course we all know is one of the best teams in the world and in Serbia who are no pushovers so uh, I gotta say I would imagine the United States will finish last in that group. Uh, that is a that is a big ask to get out of Group E for the U.S. Uh, group F, you got Austria, Cameroon, France, and Honduras. Pretty easy group for France, really. Our World Cup champions in real life. Um, can't see any either any of those three teams um, finishing ahead of France in that group. And it will be kind of interesting to see who else gets through. But gotta think it's gonna be Austria, right? Um, group G, Australia, Egypt, Italy, and Portugal. That's an interesting group. Got to think that Italy and Portugal are going to go through, but Egypt and Australia can, you know, they're capable of causing a surprise. Uh, and then the final group, Colombia, Holland, Norway, and South Korea. Got to think that Holland and Colombia are going through. But, um, yeah, that'll be a, another decent group to watch. So that is the World Cup groups. Um, probably I might do a little special episode next summer in the game to kind of go over what happened in the World Cup. But let's look at what's going on with us. Uh, actually, you know what I think we'll do is we'll just go ahead and calm the two games. Um, the, uh, let's see, here's the first leg. So this was the a Western Con the MLS Western Conference semifinal against Minnesota. This is leg one at Minnesota, and we're starting a couple minutes in because I forgot to start the video. <laughs> so that's what happened. Now, um, kind of the reality is coming into this game is injuries are killing me, um, absolutely devastating me. As I, we already kind of discussed, how I lost both my fullbacks. Um, I had to move De La Garza out to left back. And I brought in Funmayor to play center back. Uh, Orjuela is playing the right back position there. And Minnesota almost got a goal. The real challenge with Minnesota was Quintero. He is so fast um, compared to my team. And they push the ball. They play. It's one of those perfect marriages. You've got a manager in Adrian Heath who wants to who wants to attack. He wants to get the ball forward quickly. So they play a high tempo. And against me, that's kind of, well, that's like kryptonite. So I really had to change some of what I did to play this series, especially considering um, my situation in the back. And there you see Minotas with the first goal on kind of a set piece. Um, 
Pena lays it over, and Minotas just one touch, blasts it in, and we're up 1-0. No. Good way to start. Um, and the truth is, I you know I, I slowed my tempo, I think, as I recall. Slowed tempo. I still played control, um, which normally I'm playing control anyway. Uh, I lowered my back line, as you can kind of tell. I, I respected Quintero's speed. Um, I knew that if I, if I didn't, those quick counters were going to kill me. They they would have definitely put me down. So, um, but as you can tell, right there, that he's he's a he's a he's a he's a handful. He's he's a load to deal with in the back, especially when you're devastated by injuries and the guys that you had in the first place weren't that great. Like I brought in, uh, I said Funmayor, but um, I think it was the right back, the right center back. But I also had to bring in Jared Watts. And Watts, as you can see, is not fit. He was not fit. Sixty-one uh, percent was his match condition, or whatever match sharpness. So he was not fit, and that's not a good situation when you're talking about one of the fastest players in the league at striker. Um, so we're one-one, about twenty minutes in. Um, this is kind of where the game sat for a while, as I recall. Um, we did. I think we did. The, the strategy that we put in worked for the most part. Um, we did frustrate, we made it difficult for them to to do what they wanted to do and attack, which you had to. I, um, as I said, opposition instruction wise, it's, I have a pretty common strategy. I want to if and the thing about Quintero, he is very fast, but he's not a very good header. He like I think we looked at his his ratings. He has a four jumping reach. So I wasn't I wasn't worried about crosses in the box to him. So I tried to force their wingers wide, and doing that did a couple things. First of all, it gave well it, it isolated their wingers, and then it also kind of gave my back line time to set up. Um, because you know it, it it slowed down their attack a little bit, and that's that's not how Minnesota wants to play. Um, and look, they also have Omar um, Omar Gonzalez at center back. He's well, he's one of the best center backs in the league. So I knew he was going to make it difficult, you know, to to attack their back line. Um, but you know, obviously, we were creating chances. I mean, not a lot. You can see the game is really even. Then Foodmeyer goes and gets a um, yellow card, so I had to back him off tackle wise. Yeah. So, um, yeah, I, I think I think I did all that I could, really. And look, I, the the guys, the play, the attack that I have is going to do what it does, right? We're going to hold the ball. We're gonna um, we're gonna create chances, and you know if if we can get the ball, and then of course then you have both center backs, so that hurt um, a little bit. Um, so yeah, attacking wise, we're gonna do what we do. Defensively is where I really was challenged to put my team in a position where they could be successful, um, and I think that was. You know, for the most part, and we'll skip the. For the most part, I did. We did that. Um, I put my team. I gave my team the best chance. Right, that's all you can do is give your players the best chance they have to make the plays they need to win. And there, right out of the half, Pena, after a nice little build up, um, puts away a chance so that we go up two to one. And so from there. Uh, this was a. Um, I had to try and think. Anytime I go up two to one in a in a you know two leg tie, I I start thinking about man, I got how am I going to hold this lead? What am I going to do? Um, I usually try to give myself a little more of a sample size because I do have this this kind of reflex to make a change, right? Um, it's like I'm up two one. You know what? What I need, I better change something because you you get whatever you get afraid they're going to start coming at you now they're going to start attacking which is kind of natural so i um i i try to force myself to to wait right to say to hold on let's see how things start playing out let's see if they make any changes to what they're doing 
let's not rush and do something hastily um, because that's how you know that's how you give up a goal that you should it so I don't remember what I do here kind of just looking at obviously De La Garza De La Garza had just come off of international duty so he started the match a little unfit he was at 91% but I wasn't going to put in um, oh that's right I brought in our tour get Cabezas off a little and get some fresh legs I also wanted Artur to get a little more fit because he was not fit coming into this tie either so I wanted to get his fitness level up because I knew he was a guy that I would might need in the near future um again we yeah, brought in Gil to replace Martinez at this point kind of my line of thinking was okay so you know what's the worst case I give up another goal and we go we tied at two I, I still think the job's kind of done we got two away goals we're not behind um, so going into the home leg you know this is this is good so let's not let Martinez get injured in the last 15 minutes um, same thing with De La Garza you know he all De La Garza was not totally fit so I subbed him out just then for Jordan who's a young kid that I'm, I'm wanting to get appearances for anyway so let's put him in and hope he doesn't blow everything in the last 10 minutes um, and so here we are just trying to hang on to our lead and obviously in Minnesota they've gone with that 4-2-4 four, four. Uh, and I think I finally realized this after sights the safe like okay I need to yeah I go contain I don't remember if I made any other changes I felt like the I don't need to lower my back line at least not at first, because Contain already does that, right? Contain already is dropping my line back to where I felt like it was safe. Um, so two to one, very exciting. Here we are with a chance, and I see now that I probably should have adjusted my set pieces a little bit because they've got three on two going the other way. But yeah, see, here we go, and now I'm nervous. Most of my set pieces, well, I have two set pieces on corners, and one of them has three guys back. But, of course, the one that has two back is the one that we choose in this situation. That's one area I'd like for SI to kind of address, maybe. Um, like, hey, end of the game, I've got the lead. Let's, let's use a more conservative set piece. Um... So here we are, and we won't watch the last highlight because it's just kind of farting around. Uh, the tie ends, and we win two to one. Um, next, we have. Let's pull it up here. Yeah, this is leg two. This one I do have from the beginning, as I recall. Um, so here I'm just trying to hold my lead, right? I'm up 2-1. Uh, I want to add goals because I will go into this game thinking, okay, I'm going to need goals, right? Um, this 2-1 to one lead is precarious. Uh, it's, you know, even if I gave up a goal, though, I, it's not worst case. You know, Minnesota still has work to do, but I felt like a goal puts it away. Um, I did start with a counter. A counter strategy just because I knew Minnesota was going to be desperate they're they're basically two goals down and so they're gonna to have to be coming for coming for goals um, and so I kept all the same tactics that I used in the first leg so lowered my back line yada 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 and then I also come with a counter strategy so that I'm back even further and I remember thinking that that if that cross had been a little better that's a goal <clears throat> Uh, I had to start De La Garza again at left back. Remick was close to being back, but I like he. I think he was fit, but he was only at like eighty percent match fitness, which is not you know that's not good enough to start a second leg of a playoff um, semifinal. So went with the same setup from leg one. Uh, I think I brought in Kyoto and took out Pena just to try to rotate a little bit, and that. <laughs> That was close. Um, 
I remember sighing in relief and also thinking, what do I need to change here? Because they, the highlights are starting to go their way. Um, yeah, in real life, you know, Minnesota is not that good. So it's, it's, it's kind of perplexing to me that they're just good in the game. I, I'm wondering if, if whatever the game favors and whenever it sims results, if it favors that fast attacking style. Um, you know, I've read in some places, and there's Quintero, again, making me nervous. Um, I've read in places that the, the idea of going fast with an attacking mentality high tempo attacking mentality direct passing is kind of overpowered um and it definitely kind of felt like it this because this was not an easy series i mean really minnesota is not like minnesota is not like terrible but it feels like they they are surviving off of two players omar gonzalez in the back and then quintero up front and then the rest are just some mediocre pieces like their whole job is to just get that ball to Cantero as fast as they can. Um, whether that's true or not, I don't know, but that's what it feels like. And I'll skip this and we'll get to the second half. So we made it to the first half with no goals and then boom, penalty. And in steps Martinez. And at this point I'm thinking, yes, Tomas, you can put this thing away. And of course it gets saved. I've not had much luck with penalties lately. And, I, and I've got my best takers. I've got it in order the way it, it should be. Um, I mean, yeah, I remember in one of the games toward the end of the season, I had a missed penalty. Uh, and of course, Martinez misses that one. But it's okay because it shows that I am at least controlling play. Um, but then, then you have a pass like that. And, and there's De La Garza giving away a penalty. And so um, that's kind of showing, like, I don't want De La Garza out left. He's not supposed to be it's not supposed to be there. And, of course, he makes that play. And um, Quintero, <laughs> he makes his penalty. And so now I'm sweating a little bit because Minnesota is one goal away from putting me out. Um... I don't think I made any changes yet, because I was yeah no I definitely didn't because I wanted to see well, you know if Minnesota was going to change, and again I felt like it wasn't that I was playing terrible. You just had De La Garza make a mistake, and then Martinez makes up for his penalty miss, puts us back on top on aggregate. But the reality is, is that not a whole lot has changed because Minnesota still needs a goal, and if they get it. And then I realized that De La Garza has, I, I had meant to do this at halftime. He had that yellow card in the first half. Um, so yeah, not a whole lot's changed. I just, you know, I they, they need to go just like they did before. So they go to this 4-2-4. Uh, I decide to leave things as they are for now. Kyoto finds Minotes and boom, boom. We've just about put it away now. We're up 4-2. Felt pretty comfortable at this point. Um, still a half hour to play. That's a long time. And if Minnesota gets two goals, even though overall the aggregate is even, it's still, they still, and I go, so I go to retain possession. Going to try and just hang on to the ball more, keep it away, figure let them chase me. I've got the lead. No reason to be, you know, just kicking the ball stupidly away. Let's take care of the ball kill this last 30 minutes and um so yeah and then minnesota makes a sub cronin who really is not that great but they don't have honestly they don't have that great of a team it's just quintero is such a load at that at that striker position um minnesota does drop back to their four two three one which i really think that that is better for them to play than even the 4 2 4. Ooh, Pena, yeah, he almost made things happen right there. But nobody was there to frame the goal, which was a little disappointing. Yeah, this is where they start um, 
they start making a move here. I don't remember if I made any changes here or not, but they Minnesota's really started to put things together. Yeah, I feel like that 4-2-4 kind of plays into my hands because there's nobody in the hole there, and so I can really just, my back line, the way I had it set up, they can they can drop back. Um, oh, yeah, and this is where I drop out and top. Out and top. Because here my, my theory is, okay, so they're pressing me. Um, they're pressing my backs now. They're pressing Watts, Food My Ore. And so I want Alton Top to drop back a little bit more to help with possession so that the goalkeeper has another option. Um, so Alton Top is a little closer to my center back so they can play the ball to him and, you know, help get the ball out the back. Probably what I should have done now that I think about it is take away my work ball into box. Or I'm sorry, play out of defense. Um, but you know, whatever. Uh, hindsight's always 2020, and that's one we should have finished right there. De La Garza with another poor ball. He's not not supposed to be there. And then Gill definitely puts it away. We go up 3-1, and that always makes you feel like some sort of genius, um, you know, because that was a sub that I brought in, and there he is finishing a nice cross from Kyoto. So at 3-1, I do think that we give away one more, um, but obviously, you know, the drama is gone. Oh yeah, I did bring Remick in, um, try and get him, you know, back into playing shape. I could take off his ease-off tackles. I decided not to, well, he's at left back. He's not good enough to try to dribble or, or, you know, try and play a lot of killer balls. So I left that as is. <clears throat> I remember I, I also brought my fullbacks in. I didn't let them be wide. Normally I have them both play wider. And then, yeah, they got one back. So it was 3-2. But that's where it ended, so we'll stop there. Um... So yeah, um, I, I yeah. So I, I, my life, my thought there. I brought my fullbacks in so that they there wasn't there was there was less space for Contero to use, and um, I think overall it 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 helped. Obviously, it didn't stop them. It didn't stop Minnesota. Although the one was a penalty, um, but you know Contero is he's a, he's a tough to handle with an MLS backline and especially a with a bunch of scrubs on the back line. Um, so we'll kind of look, again, injuries, injuries, injuries. And by the way, I'm going now into the MLS Cup Final against Atlanta United, which you can see. And my other center back that I was using, Jared Watts, goes down. So he's hurt. Luckily, I'm able to move De La Garza back to where he's supposed to be inside now that Remick is healthy enough to play. But I've got Connor Donovan on the bench. You know, two-star. Like my bench is... It's pretty poor right now. Um, it's kind of a desperate situation. Um, but, you know, we're going to play Atlanta United and find out how that goes. Uh, they are, and go look at their, um, so I can find the Atlanta scouting report. Yeah, that's the pre-match analysis. They play the same formation that I do. Where is that? I know I saw it somewhere. There it is, right in the same day, duh. Um, so they play the standard mentality, mostly flexible, but I tell you what, when we play them in match, they seem to play fast. It could be, though, just because of how good they are. They are a good team. Um, this says they've got Martinez playing set forward, but if you look at their squad, they've got... Um, Brandon Vasquez, who, if they play Vasquez, that could be a problem. Um, I don't have any of my scouts scouting the league yet, but I do have, I'm, I'm trying to bring in a couple more scouts to help with, to, so I can do that. But his heading, obviously, is 10 to 15, so, you know, if you split that, it might be around 13. Um, strength, probably strong enough to, you know, <laughs> do the job. Um, jumping even if that's halfway you know 11 
So he is a threat as a header, so I'll have to take that into account a little bit. He's not going to dominate in the air, but he'll sneak a goal. Now, if they play Martinez, if they play Martinez at center striker, which is what my scouting report told me, well, he's not as dangerous a header. He's, he's strong, relatively, you know, in, in MLS, but he doesn't have great jumping, and his heading is kind of average. So if Martinez plays center striker, then maybe I don't have to worry about them heading as much. But you look at just look at their squad. I mean, look at that attack. You know, their front five: Nagby, Almiron, uh, Vila, Vila, uh, Hector, <laughs> Joseph Martinez. Um, Barco is he's he can play, but I doubt they'll try and play him at seventy eight percent. He was you know coming off an injury. He is very good. He is one of the best players on that team, and he's only eighteen, so he's going to just terrorize this league for a long time to come at FM. Um, and you know their back line is not is not terrible um, and it sets up well they've got Escobar on the right he's three and a half stars he's going to help Miles Robinson who's a young kid who's not that good but Robinson's in between Escobar who's good on the right and then Perez Gonzalez Perez on the, in the other side so you and, and while Garza's not that great, he's got Perez next to him. So it, it's kind of the, like, I can't even say, well, I'll just go up the right or I'll just go up the left because they've got, they've got at least one of the, one quality player on each side of the back. And, um, you know, and Kratz is a def, is a, is a decent you know, holding midfielder. So, you know, I mean, you look at the squads, they have the advantage. They're a better team. They're, they're just, let's just call it like it is. I've got some, you know my front five is formidable you know we we know if we can put things together the way we usually do then you know we're going to make life difficult for them um but my back line is is patchwork at best um and so yeah i i would definitely land united has the advantage um i will live com that game so next episode watch um and watch the mls cup final houston dynamo Atlanta United for all the marbles. And I'll see you then.